Hello, Hillside. Nice to see you again. I'm JoLynn Witten, Executive Director. Uh, if you can't tell, today is our team day for our fun celebratory week with our employees. We're trying to make sure we are finding some happiness in these days. So, so I'm wearing my Minnesota Vikings gear. Um, I don't know what's going to happen with football season this year, but I'm ready today. I've even got my Viking sneakers on. Those were a gift from my mother. Uh, she knows a, a good gift for me. So, um, so we're, like I said, trying to find some smiles in all of this. Uh, believe it or not, this coming Monday is Memorial Day. Wasn't it just Mother's Day? Uh, hard to keep track at, at this point in time. So, so I have found seven Memorial Day fast facts that you probably didn't know. I promise this will be shorter than our Mother's Day facts. <laughs> so Memorial Day uh, is synonymous with things like barbecues and picnics. Again, this year will be a little different for all of us with COVID-19. Um, but the holiday's roots actually trace back farther than you may have realized. So a few fast facts, and it has evolved over about 150 years in the United States of America. Multiple cities claim to be the birthplace of Memorial Day. According to the Library of Congress, President Lyndon Johnson declared Waterloo, New York to be the birthplace of Memorial Day, referencing a celebration the town had in 1866. However, other places are known to have celebrated the holiday earlier, and exactly where the first celebration took place remains in dispute. So maybe someday when we're all back together, we can uh, talk about that one. It was originally called Decoration Day. The holiday was celebrated by decorating the graves of fallen soldiers with flowers, flags, and more, hence the name Decoration Day. And then over time, it's become known as Memorial Day. Union General John A. Logan founded the holiday. Although people were already decorating graves of fallen Civil War soldiers in an unofficial way, General Logan codified the holiday. The 30th of May, 1868, is designated for the purpose of strewing with flowers or otherwise decorating the graves of comrades who died in defense of their country during the late rebellion and whose bodies now lie in almost every city, village, and hamlet church yard in the land. That was a quote from General Logan. I had never heard of General Logan until I read this article. Our fourth fact is Memorial Day wasn't celebrated on the last Monday in May until relatively recently. When General Logan officially launched the holiday, he called for it to be observed on May 30th. After the Uniform Monday Holiday Act took effect in 1971, it was moved to the final Monday in May. So that's an interesting one too. 1971 is when all these holidays were moved to Monday so we could have long weekends. Logan may have chosen May 30th for an interesting reason. The date was selected because it wasn't the anniversary of any battle in particular. Well, according to legend that is. It's also customary for the US president or vice president to give a speech. And traditionally, that speech is delivered at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier at Arlington National Cemetery. Ahead of Memorial Day weekend, the 3rd U.S. Infantry also places American flags in front of Arlington's over 260,000 graves and niches. Be interesting to see exactly how this plays out this year uh, with COVID-19 and how it may be a little bit of a different Memorial Day uh, for us and for all of those across the country. And last but not least, originally, only soldiers who had died in the Civil War were honored. After World War I, though, the holiday began to encompass members of the American Armed Forces who had fallen in any conflict. So on Memorial Day, we remember all of those who we've lost in battle uh, here in the United States of America, everyone who has fought for the freedom that we have, um, and the freedom that we still are honored to have even in this COVID-19. So I think we need to be very mindful of our many blessings and freedoms in this country 
uh, so many things to be thankful for. I know that's hard right now, uh, but we've got to keep all those things in mind and uh, think about the history behind it. So I have a little thing for you. You will find in your happy bag uh, for Memorial Day, uh, the first of a series of cards called A Beautiful Question. Looks like this, just looks like a postcard. Um, and every time you receive one of these, it has a question on it and will ask you to fill out your answer and then have a conversation, a discussion with your buddy or with somebody else special to you, a family member, maybe a grandchild even, uh, about these beautiful questions and see how they feel about it. And uh, maybe we can create some stories. And if you want to submit these to us, you can, or you can hold on to them. So this week's beautiful question is, what gift would you give the next generation? So um, as we're remembering, let's also be thinking ahead um, and being grateful and mindful of what we have and think about what gift you would give to the next generation. So uh, when you get your heart card in your happy bag, have a discussion with someone about that and uh, please give us your feedback and then more to come with uh, these beautiful questions in the weeks ahead. So everyone take care, uh, enjoy your Memorial Day weekend, stay safe, and we'll see you soon. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, it's nice, to see, well, I can't see you all. I'm assuming you're out there watching me. So good morning. Um, today, we're introducing a new segment on Hello Hillside, and I've decided I'm gonna call it Turning the Tables. <laughs> so we're, uh, but seriously, you know, we wanted to just mix things up a little bit and um, start interviewing a staff member um, in addition to some of our residents. Uh, for you all to get to know them a little better. And so who better to start with than our very own Greg Burdett, who has been interviewing some of you, and he's also our Director of Human Resources here at Hillside. And he also moonlights as a talk show host, I guess. It seems like we put him into these talk show host roles all the time. So here we go through the magic of television. Uh, good morning, Greg, it's nice to see you today. Good morning, Tracy. It's nice from to afar. <laughs> from afar. I'm happy to see you're wearing your social distancing hat as I am. Yes, yes. So uh, these are prototypes. Um, actually, Wayne, Wayne uh, threw these together for us. And, um, you know, we're trying them out and seeing how it goes. I mean, you know, making plans for reopening. We've got to see what works and what doesn't. So, <laughs> so this is you know, one of the options that we're looking at. So, uh, so Greg, um, you know, it's nice to have you here today. How's it feel to be in the hot seat for a change though? Boy, I, I tell you, I don't like this side of the, uh, the mic. Uh, I, I feel much more comfortable when I'm asking the questions. Well, you know, I, I was uh, giving a thought, a little thought to that, and I would imagine there are any number of our staff members who would really like to be sitting in my seat for this. <laughs> <laughs> They'd be getting even. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So, um, well, um, I know that uh, you, you have kind of a set of questions that you like to ask when you interview the residents, and I thought that we might kind of go along the same way. So, you know, other than your uh, duties at work, wh what other ways have you been finding to keep busy during this uh, stay-at-home order that we're in? Well, I it's been hard. Um, you know, we're trying to, uh, we're trying to be good. Uh, I can tell you I've never done more yard work and gardening in my life <laughs> done in the last several weeks. So uh, at least my lawn is looking great. Um, I've watched a couple of great Netflix uh, shows that I would have never watched. I don't know that I should have watched some of them. There's some wild stuff out there. Yeah, absolutely. You probably got sucked right in too. They have a habit of before you even know what you're getting into, you're 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 into it. Well, yeah. <laughs> so maybe nothing that you're going to recommend to our residents. <laughs> uh, don't watch Ozark. Okay, don't. there you go. You heard it right from Craig. Do not watch Ozark. <laughs> <laughs> if it if it's like with kids, as soon as you tell them not to do it, they're going to do it, Greg. They will. That's okay. Yeah. 
Well, so, and Jane is managing to put up with you okay during all of this? Uh, yeah, I don't know about that, but um, we're celebrating our 37th wedding anniversary next week. Oh, well, congratulations. Happy yeah, anniversary. If, if we make it. Um, <laughs> been very patient. Um, she's been laid off of her main position. And uh, so she's, uh, she's getting lots of stuff done around the house and keeping me well fed. Oh, well, then it sounds like everything's perfect, at least from your side of things. <laughs> Maybe next week's interview will be with Jane. Oh, write that down. I like that. All yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> I think I've, I've put on the COVID-19. That's like the freshman 15, but it's the COVID-19 pounds. I, uh, I think I know exactly what you're talking about. I've, uh, you know, you go to the grocery store and you want to stay well stocked. So there may or may not be more than one container of ice cream in my freezer at any given time. So, yeah. So, I've you know, well, Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> so, okay, enough talk about what you're doing while you're staying in. What's the first thing you're going to do when we, all of this craziness stops? Boy, I, for me, I'm going to go out to dinner. Uh, I'm dying to see my kids and grandkids. Um, but just to be able to sit in a restaurant and have a glass of wine and relax. And uh, I'd also, you know, I miss, I miss a lot of friends too that uh, we socialize with on a regular basis. And, uh, and I miss the residents. I can't wait to be able to uh, interact with our residents out and about in the hallways and different activities, uh, performing arts center. Uh, I can't wait for uh, those days to, and they'll be here soon. They will be here soon and I agree with you 100%. I was actually standing uh, at the back of the performing arts center yesterday, just uh, kind of you know looking and missing all the wonderful things that we've been doing there and there's many more to come. I'm, I'm sure we're all looking forward to it. Okay, so the question that has to be asked, have you heard any good scuttlebutt around the community lately? Ooh, um, boy, since I ask this question all the time, I should be prepared <laughs> to answer it. Um, let's see. There's a couple of little love affairs brewing amongst the staff. Ooh. Um, I'm hoping that... Uh, Someone may be getting the courage soon to ask somebody to marry. Ooh, I'm intrigued. You two know who you are, you young kids. <laughs> oh my goodness. Now you know what's going to happen. The detective work is going to start now. <laughs> yes. Let's just say maybe one's in maintenance and one's in nursing. I'll leave Oh it my. Oh dear. All right. Well, <laughs> Goodness, I think this is the most uh, scandalous answer we've gotten to the to the scuttlebutt question so far. Although I did like Rufus's answer. Yes, that, that was yes. pretty good too. <laughs> well, I don't want to uh, take up too much more of, of your time. I know how busy you are these days. So, uh, <laughs> I, but I, you know, I really, my goal today was to make you nervous and to make you squirm in your seat a little bit you did. You um, with the tables turned. Okay, good. I'm glad to hear that. So, and, uh, but we sure do appreciate you taking the time. Um, I know that all of our residents probably enjoyed uh, hearing from you and also maybe being able to look for just even the slightest sign of your discomfort today. I'm sure that they were, they were hoping that something like that was going to going to happen. So thank you again, Greg. And uh, to all of our residents, we just want to uh, say that's it for now. We'll be coming back to you with another episode soon and want to let you know we sure do miss you. And we do appreciate we do. you watching, and we'll see you soon. Until next time. Bye-bye. So the fellow inquires of his doctor. He says, Doc, he says, how much would you charge me to change my nose? The doctor says, $500. He says, oh, my gosh. He says, do you have anything cheaper? He says, well, you can try walking into a telephone pole. This week, our three hillside heroes come from our dining, concierge, and security departments. Our first hero is Dan Russ, sous chef and baker extraordinaire. In addition to his regular sous chef responsibilities, 
Dan is also the hero in keeping our carb counts happily high with plenty of delicious breads and baked goods. Our next hero is Kate Jobman of Concierge and Security. Kate is one of our front desk heroes whom you'll see also wearing an orange security shirt at times. Nope, she didn't borrow it from her husband, Bob. She's also a security hero herself. And last, but certainly not least, is Paige Dowd, concierge and screening desk. Paige is one of our health center concierge, but with the desk closed in the evenings at the Prospect Woodward, she's been happily sharing her friendly smile with us at the screening desk while making sure temperatures stay in check. 